Hi, I'm Janet Ingle, the five minute read maker. If you're watching this on YouTube, would you go ahead and click subscribe for me and maybe even notify? That way you always know when I drop a new episode. And it also makes it easier for other people to find my channel and become better read makers and happier musicians. So thank you so much. Today, I am going to talk about wire on an English horn read. And actually it astonishes me a little bit that I had not done this before, but in Read Club last night, somebody asked me about it, said she had searched for a video, couldn't find one on my channel. Um, and I do wire my English horn reads. I love wire on an English horn read. And so I thought I would talk about it. First, why we wire, and second, how to wire. I've heard it said that we wire our English horn reeds in order to control the opening, in order to keep the, the roundness contained. And I don't necessarily think that is true, although I am not averse on an old reed to like just using that wire to like shove it open or shove it closed or like, you know, manhandle the um, woman handle the opening of the read a little bit with the wire, but that is not fundamentally the usefulness of it, I don't think. What I find is that an English horn read without wire feels big and flappy and a little, uh, maybe a little out of control to me. And I say this as an oboist who sometimes plays the English horn rather than as an English horn specialist. When I wire the read, um, effectively, I'm reducing the amount of vibrating surface by, you know, a couple of millimeters by putting a wire right here. And it makes the reed less flappy and vibrant a little bit. And it seems to improve the upper register. It holds the whole thing up just a little bit better. It raises the crow, which turns it uh, generally, when I finish a read to about this point, it's crowing a C, a C sharp, and then when I wire it, that crow comes up uh, to a D often. And just like on the oboe, when the crow comes up, the upper register gets better. That seems to be the case for English horn reads too. Fundamentally, I think it just makes the English horn read feel a little bit more like an oboe read to me. And that pleases me. <laughs> it is helpful to me when the English horn reed feels a little bit more oboey and holds its own pitch together a little bit better. Plenty of completely legitimate and wonderful oboists do not wire their English horn reeds. It is optional. I welcome you and invite you to do your own experimenting about whether you like to wire or not. Here is how I wire. You can see that I have this reed here. It's the same one I was showing on my other camera. And it's, I think, pretty finished. Here's what it sounds like. Got a nice beep. It's got a crow, which I think is a C. Nope, the crow is a C sharp, which I feel great about. That seems normal to me for an English horn reed. Here it is playing on the instrument. But you can hear that it's just a little bit flat up top, although the basic opening of the reed feels really comfortable. Here is a piece of wire that I have cut from my spool. I use 28 gauge brass wire. I just get it from Amazon. And uh, sometimes I have found that 28 gauge wire comes a little too um, flimsy for my taste. I like it to have a little bit of, of resistance in it. And a student uh, turned me on to the idea of ordering it half hard. Like, I don't know from wire, right? I don't know what the gradations all are. But when I made the effort to search Amazon for 28 gauge brass wire half hard, I was happier with the result. So this is what I have. Your results may vary. Here's how I do it. Um, because I did make a video about this. I like to have the wire pointing away from me so that the wire ends up on the upper blade of the English horn, of the English horn reed. So it's up against my upper lip. Um, plenty of people feel differently and it doesn't matter. I definitely ran this experiment and found that it made no difference at all. I personally like having the reed, uh, having the wire pointing away from me. So that's how I'm going to do it here. But if you don't like that, you can just do it the other way. 
What I have is my lower blade, my shorter blade, facing me right now. And I start with the wire behind. I've got it set, I don't know, a couple three millimeters above the thread, right around where the bottom of my scrape is. And this is an indefinite science. And you can see that I'm actually pinching it hard against the reed on both sides. So I'm pressing it up against the back of the reed and I'm using my two fingers to press it against the sides of the reed. As I cross over, I want to cross right the right side, <laughs> right over here, over the left side, because this reed has been wound up right-handed. And so the reed is, has an overlap. Um, you'll see, I have videos about the overlap, but you can see that my back blade is slightly visible on the left-hand side, which is appropriate to a right-handed reed. And so as I cross these over, I want to be winding, uh, wiring against the overlap, the same way that I wound against the overlap. As I cross these two wires over, I'm pinching them good and hard with my fingers on the side of the reed because I do not want this wire escaping and then like crimping in some other place besides the side of the oval. And now I'm going to turn... What am I going to do? I'm going to use my finger here to press my crossed wires right down against the reed. Rotate the thing around. And now I've got, again, my two fingers pressed against. So in the back, behind what you can see, what you cannot see, is those two wires neatly crossed over each other, not actually an X anymore, they just look like two wires. And I'm gonna cross them again, right over left. Pinching, pinching, pinching to keep everything snug. And now I'm just gonna use my fingers to start twisting this counterclockwise. So the right over left just continues thusly. And you notice that I still haven't let go of that wire around the reed, I'm holding tightly. Now, I'm nowhere near being snugged up against the reed with my finger tightening. So I'll just do that with my needle nose pliers now. Starting with my pliers right at the apex there, I'm just gonna twist and bring this in until it's snug against the reed without being overly tight. And I'm pretty happy with the way that looks. So I'll use the wire cutting part of my pliers to cut that wire. I'll fold it down with my finger. And so here's my lower blade now. Two nice parallel wires. Here's my upper blade one long skinny one. Again, if you prefer to have the wire against your lower lip, you would just start this process with the upper blade facing you to end up thusly. And I expect that the crow will have come up. And because I have no pitch sense, I'm gonna try it. Oh, look at that, we're still at a C sharp didn't come up to a D. Normally it does. <laughs> Here it is on the instrument. And for me, that is holding the pitch up a little bit better. It feels a little bit more comfortable in my mouth, a little less like I have to hold on to it. And that is the way I wire an English horn reed. I hope that this has been helpful. This has been a five minute read maker lesson. You can follow these short videos right here on YouTube. You can subscribe if you wish. I hope you will. And if you need to reach me to order Reads or Cane, to order a copy of my book, The Happiest Musician, or to ask me a question that I could answer in a future five minute read maker episode, you can find me at JanetIngle.com. For that matter, if you wanted to come to Read Club some Monday night where you could directly ask your questions and have me engage with you right away, um, Read Club is the easiest and least expensive way to get in and work with me. Uh, you can find that information on my website as well. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.